So guys, we will be looking at India's 33 to the extent of diluted EPS today. In the previous session, we have already discussed the concept of basic EPS. So now we are trying to look at this concept of diluted EPS. So what is this diluted EPS and how is it significantly different from the basic EPS that we have learned? So just to revise what we have already done, I said this standard is a peculiar standard of all its all other standard is because it only deals with measurement and recognition, sorry, measurement and disclosure. It's a pure disclosure standard and there is no recognition of EPS anywhere. So there is no EPS account debit or EPS account credited. So it's only a pure disclosure standard. I try to calculate what is the amount of EPS and I will try to put the amount of EPS on the face of the PN. So in simple sense, this is exactly what the standard is discussing about. So measurement when I stood above, the first topic which we have discussed was basic EPS as a part of India's 33. Under basic EPS, we stood at, we, we basically understood what is a formula that is paced by Wayne's profits available to equity shareholders divided by weighted average number of equity shares. So we understood in detail what is the computation of the numerator that is profits available to equity shareholders and also the computation of WNES that is weighted average number of equity shares. Now, we also took about the adjustments in pace where we had two adjustments, one regarding your preference dividend, other one regarding certain expenses which are adjusted to reserves which otherwise would have been debited to PL. These were the two adjustments which I particularly concentrated upon when I was discussing about the computation of the numerator part that is profits available to equity shareholders. When it came to veins, we did discuss about veins but also we looked at adjustments regarding different nominal value or different paid up value shares. We also looked at the bonus shares which is change in number of shares without change in uh, without, without uh, corresponding change in enterprise resources. We also looked at the bonus element in rights issue. This way we did discuss about multiple aspects of this particular standard under basic EPS so far. Now we will be moving slightly forward into a very complicated concept called as diluted EPS. I will call it complicated because the understanding is one which most students fail. When I use the word diluted EPS immediately people will say I don't want to learn about this topic because this is a slightly a tougher topic. But unfortunately what you need to understand is basic elements of why this diluted EPS has actually emerged in its concept and what is the significance of reporting your diluted EPS. So basically to start with let me look at diluted EPS. The name itself is using the word diluted. What do you mean by dilution? Dilution means something which is strong. I'm making it even more or lighter, right? So if there's a coffee, then how do you dilute it? Mix a little more milk into it. Automatically the coffee gets diluted. Same logic in EPS. A basic EPS which is strong, I'm diluting to report it as diluted EPS. That means there is a reduction from basic EPS. So one fundamental point I'm here driving is your diluted EPS to be reported cannot be more than the basic EPS. Fair enough. Because the name itself stood as diluted EPS. Diluted EPS means the value of diluted EPS is definitely less than the value of basic EPS. Then the concept comes out. Why did this concept even emerge? Why should I learn about this concept of diluted EPS? How is it so significant in reporting? Diluted EPS is only to look at what is the worst case EPS possible. An enterprise reported a basic EPS of 5. So every shareholder holding a share of 10 rupees each or 100 rupees each is earning 5 rupees per share. That itself is not sufficient. I am telling the user, you are, if you are a shareholder and you have earned 5 rupees per share as per basic EPS computation, I am telling you the worst case scenario is 3.5. That is the worst EPS that can be reported. Question comes up, how did the EPS worsen? It was 5. How did it become 3.5? There is a dilution in the basic EPS. What was the reason for the dilution? The particular reason for dilution emerges from the concept called as a very important concept which I am looking at. Just move the presentation forward. 
So this concept is basically talking about something called as potential equity share. What do you mean by potential equity share? Potential equity share is not an equity share today. On today's day, I don't find this as equity share at all. But it has a potential to get converted into equity share in future. Now you tell me, if a potential equity share gets converted into equity share in future, what happens to your basic EPS? Number of equity shares increased. If number of equity shares increased, that means your denominator that is a veins increased. In a fraction, in a fraction, which is EPS paid by veins, if the denominator increases, what is the effect on EPS? Obviously, EPS will reduce. If I say 2 by 5, answer is 0 0.4. If I say 2 by 6, answer is that is what I'm talking about. It is big, it will now automatically uh, reduce to 0 0.33. So 0 0.4 became 0 0.33. There's a reduction in the value of EPS because there is an increase in the denominator in the in, in a fraction. Same way, when a potential equity share gets converted into equity share, the weighted average number of equity share, which is the denominator part in basic EPS, increases. This increase in the denominator normally reduces the value of basic EPS. Therefore, that reduction in the value of basic EPS is called as dilution. And this EPS resulting is called as diluted EPS. Now, what are potential equity shares? Give me a few examples. You are saying they are not equity shares today, but they have a potential to get converted into equity share. Now, what are these? Logic very simple. These are contracts. These are certain contracts or certain instruments which have a potential or which entitle the holder of the instrument to receive equity shares of the enterprise in future. So today I find it as a contract or today I find it as an instrument. This instrument or a contract is giving the holder of the instrument or a contract a right. The holder of the instrument is having a right to, con to receive equity shares of the enterprise in future. So when he receives these equity shares in future, your weighted average number of equity shares increase. When there is an increase in weighted average number of equity shares, automatically there is a dilution in the value of EPS. Examples please. I issue convertible debentures. What happened? When I show convertible debentures, until today's day, these debentures are yielding interest. They are not affecting my weighted average number of equity shares at all. But however, once they get converted into equity share, if the holder is entitled to receive equity share in future, then the holder who is, re who, the holder who is holding those shares will become an equity shareholder, automatically increasing my weighted average number of equity shares. Such similar example, if I have to give you, your convertible preference share is also a classical example. Similar way, options, options which when exercised become equity shares is also a classical example of potential equity shares. Today, I have given the employees an option to exercise 50 shares at the end of three years. So if the employee is in continuous employment for the next three years, he is entitled to receive equity shares of the enterprise. So as on today, it is an option, but it entitles the holder of the instrument, the employee who is a holder, he is entitled to receive equity shares of the enterprise at the end of year three. Since he is entitled to receive equity shares at the end of year three, they are called as potential equity shares. Share warrants are also potential equity shares. Partly paid up shares, potential equity shares. How are partly paid up shares, potential equity shares? I'll tell you. If I have 10, 6 rupees partly paid shares, 10, 6 rupee partly paid share, face value being 10. Under your Wayne's computation, under basic EPS, I will consider equivalent number of shares. Under equivalent number of shares, what I'll tell you, what I'll do? I will consider these 10 shares as equivalent to only 6 10 rupee shares. Therefore, Wayne's is significantly lower. 
But if the money is paid up, the balance 4 rupees is paid up. Now I will have to consider the total number of shares as 10 in computation of weights. Automatically increase in the denominator. Automatically reduction in the value of EPS. So even a partly paid up share can also be considered as a diluted EPS or a potential equity share. They have a potential to dilute the amount of EPS to reduce the value of EPS. Now, this is my concept of potential equity shares. Let us see how do I calculate a diluted EPS. How, what do, you, how do you calculate a basic EPS? P, pace by veins. How do I calculate diluted EPS? Pace plus increase in pace divided by veins plus increase in veins. Until now, I have been consistently saying that there is an increase in the denominator, increase in the denominator. That's why there is a dilution in it. But let me tell you, there is also an increase in the numerator. Convertible debentures. That was the example which I gave you. I told you that they have a right, the, own, the uh, holder of the instrument, holder of the debenture has a right to convert into equity shares. But if the holder exercises his right to receive equity share, the enterprise will avoid interest charges in the future. Therefore, what happened? While your computation of profit after tax is concerned, this interest element is no longer applicable. Therefore, the increase in the profit after tax because there is no interest expense debited to PN. Therefore, there is an increase in pains or pays also an increase in pains. Increase in pays to the extent of the debenture interest. Increase in veins to the extent of number of shares issued on conversion of the debenture. Similarly, you also have the situation for convertible preference shares as well. Under convertible preference shares, your preference dividend, which was earlier deducted in computation of pays. What was your formula for pays? Profit after tax minus preference dividend. But if the preference shares got converted into equity share, there is no further reduction of preference dividend. That means automatically there is an increase in the profits available to equity shareholder. So that increase in profits to the extent of preference dividend reduced by number of equity shares should be considered in computation of your diluted EPS with the formula as pace plus increase in pace divided by veins plus increase in veins. Now, before I get into this concept of diluted EPS, I will introduce to you a small concept called as dilution factor of a potential equity share. I'm saying every potential equity share have a potential to dilute the EPS. This effect of dilution in the EPS is measured by something called as dilution factor. Dilution means reduction. So every potential equity share has an effect of reducing the EPS. To how much extent does the EPS reduce? This is computed by something called as dilution factor. How do I calculate the dilution factor? Dilution factor of any potential equity share is increase in profits available to equity shareholders divided by increase in weighted average number of equity shares. So increase in pace by increase in veins when these potential equity shares get converted into equity shares is considered to be called as a dilution factor. That is the effect of dilution or reduction in the value of basic EPS. Let's look at how do I calculate dilution factor. If I look at dilution factors and potential equity shares, look at first the preference shares. Preference shares, what is the increase in the numerator that is a profit? Preference dividend plus any dividend distribution tax which I pay on such dividends. That is also avoided because I don't have to pay dividend anymore. Divided by number of shares issued on conversion of these preference shares. If I look at convertible debentures, what is the increase in numerator? My profits will increase to the extent of interest, but there was a tax saving on interest. Now you don't have such tax savings, so automatically your tax expense has increased. Therefore, the increase in the numerator profits available to equity shareholder is equal to debenture interest into 1 minus tax rate. To the extent the tax payment will increase, 
So the net reduction which I will get is into 1 minus t divided by veins. Increase in veins is nothing but number of equity shares issued to the debenture holders upon conversion into equity shares. Clear? If I look at options, options, there is no increase in pace. Just because options became equity shares today, there is no increase in profits available to equity shareholders. So take the increase in numerator as round zero divided by number of options exercised for nil consideration. I will explain about this denominator part. But ultimately I can tell you zero divided by any number is zero. You do zero divided by hundred, you do zero divided by infinity, answer is zero. So therefore, a dilution factor of an option is always zero here. So since no fraction can be less than zero, I can say that the dilution factor is the least for options. Increase in pains by increase in veins for options is round zero. But in options, the denominator part, numerator is anyway zero, there is no increase in pains. But the increase in veins to the extent of dilution in EPS should only be considered to the extent of number of shares issued for nil consideration. I will discuss about this concept of number of shares issued for nil consideration. Wait for that. Options exercised for nil consideration I will discuss but until here what we have been discussing is the effect of a potential equity share which entitles the owner of the instrument to receive equity shares in future will reduce the amount of EPS. Such a reduction in the EPS is called as diluted EPS. There is no chance that your diluted EPS is greater than basic EPS. Dilution itself is reduction. So DEPS is always less than BPS. Clear?
So let's look at it. Now, we have been discussing about the dilution effect and the dilution factors. Now let's first concentrate upon the options there. Options exercise for nil consideration and how do I calculate? Options exercise for nil consideration is given with that formula as total number of options minus proceeds from exercise of option divided by market value per share. Number of options minus proceeds from exercise of options divided by market price per share. This is the formula to identify options exercised for nil consideration. I'll take an example and I'll explain guys. Let's say for example, number of options outstanding, let's say it was with the employees itself. Number of options outstanding are, let's say about 10,000, okay? And let's say the market price per share on that date is about rupee 50. Guys, no option will get exercised unless its exercise price is less than market price. What is the exercise price? An exercise price is always less than market price per share. So let's say my exercise price per share is about 40. Okay. So what will happen out here? Now look at this logic. In this case, what is the proceeds from exercise of option? Proceeds from exercise of options. Each option is exercised at 40 rupees, total 10,000 options. Therefore, I am looking at a total amount of 4 lakhs. However, market price is 50. If I would have issued these shares at market price, number of shares to be issued at market price per share. How much did you collect from the options? 4 lakhs. What is the market price per share? 50 rupees. Therefore, if I would have gone with issuing the share at market price, in such case, I would have only issued 8,000 options or 8,000 shares. However, how many did you issue? Therefore, options considered for dilution Options considered for dilution is equal to total I had 10,000 options out of which I am saying at market price I would have issued 8,000. Therefore, for dilution I will only consider 2,000 options. As simple as that. So, when I consider options considered for dilution or options to be considered having nil consideration because if you remember I just gave you the formula for options and I told you that options exercise for nil consideration is given by this formula. So in this given case, if I have to calculate options exercise for nil consideration, I'll, I'll call it like this. Options exercised for nil consideration is equal to calculate and check how many options were there actually 10,000 minus proceeds from exercise of options 10,000 into 40 
divided by market price that is 50 will give you an answer of 2000. So that is the formula which I gave. Number of options outstanding minus proceeds from exercise of options minus sorry divided by market price per share. That will give me the number of options considered at sorry uh, exercised at nil consideration which should be considered in computation of dilute DPS. So I will not consider the entire 10,000 options but I will only consider 2,000 options. If I have to calculate a dilution effect or dilution factor for this remember dilution factor for the numerator or increase in pace is always 0 divided by number of options excised at nil consideration that is 2000 answer is 0 and therefore I can put up one simple statement out there a very important statement I am going to make a dilution factor df is always greater than or equal to 0 either it can be equal to 0 or it can be greater than 0 but not less than 0 Therefore, options have lowest dilution factor and highest dilution effect on EPS. Since the dilution factor is either 0 or more than 0, options which is 0 is the lowest dilution factor. No other uh, potential equity share can have a lower dilution factor than the option. And I am saying their effect of dilution on the EPS is the maximum. I will show you dilution also. Let us assume that my basic EPS which is Pace by Baines is given like this. It is 1 lakh divided by 10,000 shares. Let us say my basic EPS is 10 rupees. With the given case, where in options you said the denominator that is option issued at nil consideration is 2000 if i have to calculate diluted eps with your formula then i'll calculate like this diluted eps is equal to 1 lakh pace plus increase in pace for option is 0 divided by 10000 veins plus increase in veins options issued or exercised at nil consideration 2000 this will give me an answer of 1 lakh divided by 12,000 which is nothing but 8.3333. Is there a dilution? Yes. Because 10 has become 8. Therefore, 100% there is a dilution. And I am saying you can have any other potential equity share but nothing dilutes as much as option does. Why does the option dilutes the maximum? Because its dilution factor is zero. Since it is the least dilution factor, it will have a highest dilution effect. Clear? So I'll make that statement. Lower the dilution factor. greater is its effect on dilution of EPS. Lower the dilution factor, higher is its effect of dilution on EPS. Here, remember this statement always. I will use this statement not immediately but at a later point of time. Let's take up one example given there. 
let's take up an example there guys net profit for the year 2021 is 12 lakhs weighted average number of equity shares outstanding during the year is 5 lakhs therefore what is your basic eps 12 lakhs divided by 5 lakhs which is nothing but 2.4 Fair value of one share during the year 2021 is 20. Weighted average number of shares under options is 1 lakh. So these are options during 2021, not exercise or are not equity shares yet. However, they have an exercise price of 15. So first thing we need to calculate is how many shares should I consider for computation of diluted EPS? How will you know how many shares should I consider? Find out the number of options exercised for nil consideration from this question. Let's solve it. First, I'll go with the computation of basic EPS is equal to paste by veins. Give your answer out. 12 lakhs profit after tax divided by 5 lakhs weighted average number of equity shares, which will leave me with an answer of 2.4. My diluted EPA should be less than 2.4 for sure. Before I get into the concept of diluted EPA, I'll have to calculate number of options exercised at nil consideration my number of options exercised at nil consideration is total number of options 1 lakh minus Proceeds from exercise of options 1 lakh into 15 rupees is the exercise price divided with the market price of 20 will make it 75,000. So this is nothing but 1 lakh minus 75,000. Therefore, the number of options exercised at nil consideration will be considered as 25,000. If I have to calculate the dilution factor here, dilution factor of options given with the formula increase in profits available to equity shareholder divided by increase in weighted average number of equity shares. What is the increase in pace? Always for options, your increase in pace is zero divided by. Veins only consider number of options exercised at nil consideration 25,000 result in an answer of zero. Let's try to calculate diluted EPS then. DEPS formula is equal to profits available to equity shareholders plus increase in profits available to equity shareholders divided by weighted average number of equity shares plus increase in weighted average number of equity shares. Use this formula and calculate the diluted EPS. How much is your profits available to equity shareholders? 12 lakhs. What is the increase in profits available to equity shareholders due to options? Zero. What is the veins? Actually 5 lakhs. Increase in veins due to options excise that nil consideration is 25,000. Calculate 12 lakhs divided by 525. 12 divided by 5.25 is 2.286. It is 2.286. If you compare it with your basic EPS, which is 2.4, there has 100% been a decrease in the EPS. Therefore, this diluted EPS is to be reported. It has to be reported or it has to be 
presented 2.286 is the diluted EPS while the basic EPS is 2.4. Fundamentally, this is the concept that one has to put it in your brain. Clear? So moving forward from here is a very, very important concept. Now, what if an enterprise not does not have just one potential equity share, but multiple potential equity shares with them? So they have options. There are dilute, uh, convertible debentures. There are convertible preferences. Now, if people are surprised, can there be an enterprise like that? Uh, I worked on a company on Indias, which is based out of Bangalore and had 27 potential equity shares. It did not have one, it had 27 potential equity shares. Imagine 27, it's not a small number. So someone can have so many potential equity shares as well. So you might come across enterprise who has only one. You can also come across enterprise which have more than one. So when I have more than one potential equity share, what is the scenario or how do I calculate the diluted EPS to be reported? Remember, diluted EPS is worst EPS. Worst EPS means least EPS. Your EPS cannot be lower than this as an effect of your potential equity share turning out to be equity share tomorrow. Clear? So let's look at this particular logic of what if an enterprise has multiple potential equity shares. So I'm taking an example for this. An earnings of a company that is net profits attributable to equity shareholders is one crore. And the number of equity shares outstanding during the year is five lakhs. That means actually your EPS is 20, right? Now, continuing. An aggregate fair value of, uh, guys, one second, guys. Guys, please consider this is not 5 lakhs, guys. Take it as 20 lakhs, okay? Let's consider it as 20 lakhs. So, 
pace is 1 crore and veins is 20 lakhs not 5 lakhs i'll correct it so therefore i will take a basic eps as 5 i'll take the basic eps as 5 the average fair value of each equity share is 75 during the year and the company had three potential equity shares options 1 lakh which had an exercise price of 60 convertible preference shares which had 8 lakh shares entitled to a cumulative dividend of 8 rupees per share and each preference share is convertible into two equity shares the attributable corporate dividend tax on these preference dividend is 10 percent along with this there is also convertible debentures of 12 percent each and the nominal value of those debentures is 10 crores 10 crores of 12 percent Therefore, there is an interest cost of 1 crore 20 lakhs each year. Each debenture of 100 rupees is converted into 4 equity shares. And the applicable tax rate is 30%. Now, if I ask you to give me what is the diluted EPS in this given case, let's see how I calculate. So like I told you, first is the value of pace, profits available to equity shareholders. What was the value of pace? It was about crore. Then we had weights, weighted average number of equity shares. I asked you to correct the weighted average number of equity shares. And I said the weighted average number of equity shares is 20 lakhs. Therefore, from this, I can calculate my basic EPS by using the formula of pace by weights. And the answer of my basic EPS is going to be 5. Now, obviously, your diluted EPS should be less than 5. Let's look at it. How many potential equity shares did he give in the question? Three options, convertible preference shares, convertible dimensions. Let's see. Dilution factors. First, when I'm considering a dilution factor for options, how do I get dilution factor for options? Answer will be 0, increase in pace. How do you calculate dilution factor, guys? Increase in pace divided by increase in veins using this formula. Now, options always increase in pace in 0 divided by veins. Veins is number of options exercised for nil consideration. I don't have that answer. Let me get, try to identify that answer. Number of options exercised at nil consideration is equal to how many options are there in the enterprise? Go back to your question and check. How many options were there? 1 lakh. What is the exercise price? 60. What is the market price? 75, which was already given to us. Right? So I know that the market price is 75. And I know that the exercise price is 60. And total number of options are 1 lakh. Let's try to calculate what are the number of options exercised for nil consideration then. Calculate. Total number of options 1 lakh minus proceeds from exercise of option into 60 divided by 75 market price per share. Solve this and identify 60 divided by 75 is 80,000. 1 lakh minus 80,000, then the answer is. 20,000 is the options exercise for 
nil consideration. Use it for computation of dilution factor divided by 20,000. Answer is obviously zero. I'm not asking you the answer, but I want the increase in pace and increase in veins. So I am saying that zero divided by 20,000 is the dilution factor for options, which is zero. The second dilution factor, part B, is convertible preferential. Again, follow the same principle, increase in pace by increase in veins. Solve it. For convertible preferential, you already know what is the conversion. Look at it. There are 8 lakh shares. Each one is entitled to receive a dividend of 8 rupees per share. And each preference share can be converted into 2 equity share. And there is a corporate dividend tax applicable on payment of dividend by 10%. So if these preference shares get converted into equity share, what will be the increase in pace preference dividend plus the corporate dividend tax? Because if I don't pay dividend, I won't pay tax on the dividend as well. Therefore, look at how I write this value. 8 lakh preference shares. Each preference share is entitled to receive a dividend of 8 rupees. The applicable corporate dividend tax is 10% divided by 8 lakh preference share. Each one is entitled to receive 2 equity shares. Therefore, solve this and find out. 8 lakh into 8 rupee is 64 lakhs plus 10 percent that is 6 lakh 40 thousand is 70 lakh 40 thousand rupee divided by 8 lakh into 2 is 16 lakhs. Solve this and get me the answer. 70 lakh 40 thousand divided by 16 lakhs. Answer is 4.4. I can tell you, it's always greater than zero. The last potential equity share that he has given to us is convertible debenture. Increase in pace. If your debenture converts into equity shares, what will be the increase in profits available to equity shareholder? To the extent of debenture interest. Correct? What is a debenture interest? Go back to the question and check once again. Debenture interest is nothing but 12% on 10, 10 crores, that is 1 crore 20 lakhs. Each debenture is converted into 4 equity share. How many debentures are there? 10 crore total nominal value. Each debenture is 100 rupees. Therefore, the total number of debentures are 10 lakhs. Each one is converted into four equity shares. The, the total number of equity shares that they get on conversion is 40 lakhs. Numerator part, I will save on debenture interest, but I will pay excess tax. And what is your tax rate? 30%. So calculate and check what is the dilution factor. Calculate the dilution factor, guys, for, dil for convertible debentures. 1 crore. 20 lakhs into 1 minus tax rate 30%. 30% is nothing but 0 0.3 divided by 10 lakh debentures. Each can be converted into 4 equity shares. 1 crore 20 lakhs into 0 0.7 is 84 lakhs divided by 40 lakhs is the total number of equity shares which they are entitled to receive on conversion. Answer is 2.1. So my dilution factors, I've got three options. I got it as zero, which we always knew. Convertible preference shares, my dilution factor is 4.4. Convertible debentures, my dilution factor is 2.1. I have the increase in pace and increase in veins for all the three potential equity shares. Now you tell me how many dilutions are possible? How many dilutions are possible in this particular enterprise which has three potential equity shares? I'll tell you. Number one, 
Dilution when only the options get converted into equity shares. Number two, dilution when only preference share get converted into equity share. Number three, dilution when only debentures get converted into equity share. Three, don't stop. Dilution in EPS when both options and preference share get converted into equity share. Number five, dilution in EPS when both options as well as debentures get converted into equity shares. Number six, dilution in EPS when both preference shares and debentures get converted into equity shares. Six, seven, dilution in EPS when all three options, preference shares, debentures get converted into equity shares. So seven possible cases. Seven possible cases are there. Now, when I have seven possible cases, I will have to be careful because I need to identify what is a diluted EPS in seven different cases. Out of seven different diluted EPS that you got, if I ask you which diluted EPS will I report, I will say worst EPS I will report. What is the worst? Least EPS I will. Let's see. I'll put down the heading as computation of diluted EPS. What is the formula that I will apply here? My formula to be applied is PACE, profits available to equity shareholder, plus increase in PACE when a potential equity share gets converted into equity share, divided by veins plus increase in veins which arises when a potential equity share gets converted into equity shares. This is the formula which I will apply in computation of diluted EPS in seven cases. Let's see what are your seven cases. First case, case one. Only options got converted. Calculate. What is the diluted EPS in this case then? First, pace 1 crore plus increase in pace due to option is 0. Veins, originally I had 20 lakh veins. Increase in veins due to options, there was only an increase of go up above. Check. Options, what was the denominator which I considered? 20,000 plus. 20, okay, I'll solve it later on. I will first write down all the seven cases. Only preference shares. PS I'm writing just in short. Numerator is 1 crore. Pace plus increase in pace only for preference shares. Preference share, what is the only preference share increase in pace? 70,40,000. Plus 70 lakh 40,000 divided by veins. Originally, veins are 20 lakhs. Increase in veins due to preference shares getting converted into equity share is 16 lakhs. Only debentures. If only debentures get converted into equity shares, Pace 1 crore as it is plus debentures increase in pace on the numerator is 84 lakhs. Increase in denominator in veins is 40 lakhs. So 84 lakhs divided by 20 lakhs original veins plus 40 lakhs increase in veins. Three cases I am done. Now I will do combination of both. Fourth case. Where both options along with preference shares are getting converted into equity shares. So calculate. First, pace 1 lakh, sorry, 1 crore. Increase in pace due to options, 0. Increase in pace due to preference share, 70 lakh, 40,000. Divided by 20 lakhs already existing veins 
plus increase in veins for options is 20,000. Increase in veins for preference share, 16 lakhs. Is it 20,000? Yes, 20,000 is correct, 16 lakhs. Now let's get to case number five. Options, not with preference shares, but with debentures. Calculate, one crore is your pace, plus options increase in pace is zero. Debentures increase in pace is 84 lakhs. Veins 20 lakhs plus increase in veins due to options is 20,000. Increase in veins due to debenture is 40 lakhs. Don't finish there. I have sixth option as well. What is the sixth one? Part F where preference shares along with debentures get converted. When both preference shares and debentures get converted into equity shares, pays 1 crore as it is. Increase in pays due to preference share, 70,40,000. Increase in pays due to debenture, 84 lakhs. Divided by already existing weighted average number of equity shares, 20 lakhs. Plus, on conversion of preference share, increase in pay veins is 16 lakhs. On conversion of debentures, the increase in veins is 40 lakhs. Last but the most important, all three where all options, preference shares, debentures, everything gets converted into equity shares, then how your diluted EPS will look. Pace, 1 crore. Plus increase in pace, option 0, preference share 70 lakh 40,000 and debenture 84 lakhs. What about your in denominator? Veins 20 lakhs already existing. Increase in veins due to option 20,000. Increase in veins due to preference share 16 lakhs. Increase in veins due to debenture 40 lakhs. Try to calculate what is your potent dilution in EPS in each of these cases. In the first case, it is 1 crore divided by 20 lakh 20,000. So here the answer is 4.95. Only preference shares are getting diluted. So in such case, it will be 170.4 divided by 36 answer is 4.73 only debentures 184 divided by 60 3.067 preference shares plus pre options plus preference share then 1 crore 70 lakh 40000 divided by 36 lakh 20000 Answer is 4.707. Next one, options plus debentures. 1 crore 84 lakhs divided by 60 lakh 20,000 is 3.056. 3.056. Preference shares plus debentures, then it will be 2 crore 54 lakh 40,000 divided by 76 lakhs. Answer is 3.347. What about all three? Now it will be 1 crore, sorry, 2 crore 54 lakh 40,000 divided by 76 lakh 20,000. 3.34 or 338 actually or 339 anything is fine. Now when I told you that there are seven possible cases if anyone has thought 
that all three together is definitely the most diluted or the diluted EPS to be reported. Let me tell you, go up above and check. Go up above and check. Is that the least EPS? 4.95, not the least. There is 3.067, but there is 3.056. This 3.056 is the least of EPS which should be reported as diluted EPS. Therefore, the EPS is equal to 3.056. This emerged in the case of options plus debentures together. So therefore, an enterprise reports something like this. The basic EPS is 5, while the diluted EPS of the enterprise is 3.056. It occurs when both options and debentures are converted into equity shares. Therefore, this is DP, DEPS to be reported. One of the most comprehensive methods which I told, which I have given you to understand the significance of diluted EPS. Guys, the understanding primarily is the most important aspect there. Guys, after all the calculations that we have seen, now comes the point. Now someone asked me a question of, is it possible? Is it possible to calculate like this in the exam? Or is this the calculation with India's 33 is expecting us to do? If I have three potential equity shares, then you did seven permutations. If I have four, if I have four, then four individually plus four C2. That means a combination of two to each. So six combinations there. 
4c3 again four combinations 4c4 one combination so how many in total 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1 so how many total i got i got a total of 15 combinations if i have 5 then so if this number keeps on increasing complexity keeps on increasing and i told you i did a company which had approximately 26 or 27 potential equity shares then think about how many combinations have i worked around is it possible let me tell you it is not possible and let me tell you this that exactly in days 33 is not expecting you to solve for all the seven permutations and combinations but you will arrive at the exact answer even though you don't solve for all the seven let me go take you through this process of how to do it do it uh, how do i calculate dilute dps as per index 33 in the least number of possible steps like you have already done this okay let me go back again i did seven combinations i won't do this how many potential equity shares were there in the enterprise three three steps i will get the answer no seven steps for the potential equity shares four steps i will get the answer maximum you have 26 maximum 26 steps that's it so i can solve it in a much easier manner for you to get it first thing that you need to do is rank each potential equity share on the basis of their dilution factor the least dilution factor gets the best rank okay least dilution factor gets the best rank so the first rank should always go to options no doubt about it because they are those which get which are the least in dilution factor so the first rank goes to options second rank based on the least dilution factor between convertible debentures and convertible preference share 4.4 and 2.1 2.1 so my second rank goes to debentures the third rank Obviously, that is the only left with. We'll go to my preference shares. Once that you have ranked it, once that you have ranked it, now in the order of ranking, consider diluted EPS. Consider the computation of diluted EPS. Diluted EPS. In the order of ranking, Three things. Three ranks, three things I'll count. First one. Only options, which is my first rank. Second rank was debentures. So options plus debentures on a cumulative basis. Third one, third rank, options. Second rank of debentures plus third rank of preference shares. Now calculate. I don't have to calculate, I already have the answers. Only options, my diluted EPS was 4.95. Options plus debentures 3.056. All three combined, answer was 3.34. Now look at it. What was your basic EPS? 5. 4.95. Is there a dilution? Yes. From 4.95 to 3.056, is there a dilution? Yes. Reduced even more. From 3.056 to 3.34, is there a dilution? No, it's an increase. Such increase, I will call it as anti dilutive effect. These cases where I get anti dilutive effect, these are suppo not supposed to be reported. They are not 
reported. Then why did I calculate? Only a disclosure is necessary. I don't have to report the CPS, but I will have to disclose the CPS. Therefore, DPS to be reported is equal to What is the DPS to be reported? Worst case CPS. What is the worst case? Not 4.95, but the answer is 3.056. Even when I did all the seven cases, my worst case EPS was still 3.056. Therefore, instead of solving by seven steps, I could conclude it only with three steps. The only typical thing which I have done to reduce all my steps was to rank my potential equity shares. Once I rank my potential equity shares in such a way that the least dilution factor will get the best rank and so on. So therefore, in such cases, I reduced all my steps. So if I have to give you the steps in computation of diluted EPS, I'll go like this. I'll go with my step one first. where I'll compute my basic EPS. We already calculated in the given case as 5. In my step 2, I will identify dilution factors for each potential equity share. If I have 50, 50 potential equity shares, 50 dilution factors. Identify dilution factors for each potential equity share. Step three, the most important step of all, this is where I reduce maximum of my effort, is what I've done in ranking. Rank dilution factor, sorry, rank potential equity shares. Rank potential equity shares from least to highest, from least to highest. Dilution factor. Least gets the best rank, highest get the worst rank. Compute DPS, diluted EPS, in the order of ranking. Cumulatively, first rank, first and second rank together, first, second, third rank together, first, second, third, fourth rank together, so on. Worst or least EPS of step four. should be reported as diluted EPS. This is my five step process. Compute my basic EPS, identify dilution factor for each potential equity share. Then comes the most important step of ranking your potential equity share from least to highest dilution factors. And finally, when I talk about step four, I will compute the EPS in the order of their ranking. The worst EPS in rank four or the least EPS in rank in the step four should be the DEPS to be reported. If in case I have an increase in EPS, just like we had in the last case, it is called as anti-dilutive effect, which should not be reported 
reported or presented but it has to be disclosed this is fundamentally the concept of diluted eps which is presented to you and remember guys what you have tried to do here is one of the easiest of the steps